Ryan loves the word nice. I said it before and I'll say it again. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm Haley. And I'm Ryan. And we're in the Brewing Happiness Test Kitchen. Today we're talking about 11 different cuts that you probably need to know how to do. These are cuts you'll see in recipes across our site and other sites. So we just kind of wanted to demo what they look like, talk a little bit about the specifics of them so that it can make it easier to know what you're doing when you're navigating either our recipes or other people's. Mm -hmm. Before we get into specific cuts, I just want to go over a couple of important things to know about handling a knife. First and foremost, a sharp knife. Uh, I think we've said it before. Sharp um, knife is a safe knife. Probably hear it again, but yeah. Yeah. Other things, general cutting guidelines is you're always going to discard ends of things. You'll see Ryan do this over and over when demoing all of these cuts. The ends of things get discarded. You can use those for stocks or yeah. compost or whatever. A nice way to start a cut is to cut into something and then you've like made yourself a flat surface. So flip whatever you're cutting onto that flat surface. It makes yep. it a lot more stable. You don't have to um, precariously try to hold something. It's not that safe. So always flip something onto a flat surface if it starts to feel unsafe to you. If you see somebody who's very experienced using a knife, it almost looks like they're not using the blade and they're just kind of chopping down. But it's really important to use the blade in its as a whole, like le the whole length of it will definitely help you. Uh, and then also um, keeping your fingers back. Using your hand on, as a stabilizer on the like base of what you're cutting is more of just like a guide for the knife. And I like to try and keep my tips underneath this first knuckle. And uh, I use that as the knife and it pretty much never leaves the knife never leaves um, those knuckles. It can feel a little unnatural if you're used to cutting like with your fingers out basically. Yeah. But the reason you see chefs do this is because it's a guide, but it's also a protector for the tips of your fingers. I mean, it's taken me years and years uh, to develop knife skills that I have. Um, and I also constantly think about it and try and improve. So it's definitely a work in progress always. It definitely takes a lot of practice uh, to achieve speed, especially if that's one thing that you know you're you're thinking about. But by all means, like don't feel like you have to be you know as, super yeah, as fast as Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> so first we have dice versus finely diced. So a dice is essentially a square cut that's bite sized. Yeah. It would probably measure, if you're getting real technical about it, like a quarter of an inch. Yeah, probably a quarter of an inch squared. Things that you're probably going to see diced are carrots, celery, and onions, um, and uh, most likely also tomatoes. A fine dice is essentially a smaller version of a dice. Exactly. It's going to measure like an eighth of an inch, um, and they're used generally for the same kinds of things. Um, a fine dice just may incorporate a little bit more. I fine dice things uh, predominantly just to make things a little less toothsome. Um, you can get a lot more onto a spoon and into a bite so you get like a nice robust uh, flavor. And also it just cooks a little bit quicker. Then we have uh, chop versus rough chop versus finely chop. Versus so we're, chop, yeah. we're gonna go through all of those. So we'll start with rough chop. Yeah, the thing about chopping in general is nothing is really uniform. I so mean, whereas dice is square, chop is like, doesn't have a shape really. Yeah, exactly. It's super rustic. Rough chop, I would go for things that you're probably not going to be using uh, on your final dish. Um, you know, certain things like stock, like a rack for roasting a chicken or, you know, any other kind of roast that you might think of. So there's no need to be very specific or think too much about it. You're just kind of breaking up a larger thing into the next size down. Chop is essentially just a smaller version of a rough chop. You're still not making any sort of uniform shape, but it's a little bit closer to 
a bite size. Yeah, something. It fits on a spoon or on a fork pretty exactly. easy. And then finely chopped. Finely chopped is probably only herbs or yeah. greens. It's the smaller version of a chop. <laughs> yeah. Much smaller. It's still very rustic. It's something you may use for a garnish um, or if you just wanna quickly get herbs into something. Now we're gonna go over slice versus thinly sliced. So a slice is exactly what you think it is. It's a slice of something. Yeah. And then a thinly sliced is just a smaller version of that, probably an eighth of an inch. Yeah. All right, which leads us to julienne, which is a more technical and refined version of a slice. Yeah, ultimately uh, it is, but it also takes things that you might not normally slice and turn them into uh, what I like to call matchsticks, but julienne is the, the proper term. Technically it's an eighth by eighth inch square that's cut two inches long. Next is cubed, which is exactly like what it sounds like you're cutting things into a cube. A recipe will usually specify what size cube they want, like half inch, inch, quarter of an inch. And so you'll just uniformly cut the whole thing into cubes. That often is applied to like root vegetables. Yeah, potatoes, turnips. Squash. Um, maybe you'll see it for a carrot. It's a nice way to evenly roast things. Now we have oblique or jewel, or no, jewel, sorry. Jewel, I call them jewel cuts. Yeah. Um, you might see it as an oblique cut. Um, we talked about this a little bit in our how to cut avocados video. Yeah. This is Ryan's favorite way to cut things. This is how I do. Almost everything. Almost everything. <laughs> I find it very easy uh, to just cut things really quick. I like how they're not uniform. With this, you're just Cutting and rotating, essentially. The thing that's really easy about them is it's just very few cuts with the knife. It works best with things that are long. Cucumbers or carrots or uh, quarters of avocado. And then we have mincing, which mincing is the smallest of small. Yeah, <laughs> the smallest pretty of much small. the, the next step before, or the step up before it's like pureed or totally mashed. You'll see this most often on garlic or ginger, things that you want to basically incorporate that flavor into the whole dish. That's why you mince something. It makes it really easy to get little tastes of that in every bite. That's that. Those are the 11 cuts we feel like you should know. And if you have any questions about other cuts, things you've seen in other recipes, let us know in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer those. Yeah. And that's it for this time. Until next time, I'm Haley. And I'm Ryan. And we're Making, making Healthy, healthy happen. happen.